Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday, March 12th, regular school board business meeting. Um, let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, first on the agenda, are there any adjustments? Yes. Um, I move that we strike number five, presentations, theater dedication proposal off the agenda per request of the teachers that had asked to have it put on originally. Okay. Have a second? Second that. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, next, may I have a motion for approval of school board minutes? I move. Uh, oh, go no, ahead. Please go. Ahead. I move we approve school board minutes from the regular business meeting Tuesday, February twelfth, uh, twenty nineteen. Second. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? You. Next, we have comments from our student representatives. Um, so the high school, there's not much going on right now. Um, one big thing that just happened was um, we had a student-led assembly last Friday, um, and it was about like uh, education for girls in third world or in developing countries. And um, so a student put on this assembly, and we watched some clips from the movie um, Girls Rising, and it was it was really good, and I thought it was pretty empowering to watch. Yeah, um, and one big thing coming up before we meet next, um, the juniors will all be taking the SAT on April 9th, um, and so everyone's kind of been getting ready for that. We've been splitting up into smaller groups um, and in study halls, been doing some SAT prep with Mr. Wagner, um, and I think that's been really beneficial, just kind of getting a feel for the format and what things are going to be like on the SAT. Um, so, yeah, that's what's up next. But. Not much else to talk about besides that. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Spring sports are also starting to commence, so it's going to be exciting. Good luck with SATs. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, next, we any are there any comments from the public on agenda items? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, presentations. Want to address? So we're so excited and proud of our girls class B swim state champions. Uh, it's always very exciting when we have a state championship team. And so welcome to all of you who are here to recognize um, those, uh, our wonderful champions. So we have some certificates for you. Uh, so we'll, um, are, are you going to go to the, do you want to go to the podium to read their names? Uh, and then we'll um, have you come up and um, we'll stand up and shake your hands as you go by. So. Okay. Congratulations. I don't think they're in any particular order, um, but it starts with M. So first we have Madison Mills. She here? Okay, we'll put it right over here. Uh, Esme Song. No, okay. <laughs> Stephanie DeBorkers. <laughs> Abigail Wolf. <laughs> Emma McCarley. Ella Bromage. Haley, Hemion. Maybe these are in order of the people who aren't here. We knew this Jeanette Kelly. No. Darby Klein. I'm just not even going to look up anymore. Madeline Mahoney. Nice. <laughs> Allison Bragg. Meryl Sesselberg. 
Olivia Ouellette. Clara Makova. Hannah Lice. Lice? Lice. Madeline Cormick. Christiana Panette, Grace Gillian, Casey Kincannon, Maria Smith, Alicia Lawrence, Jay Linda Lindenau, Avery Palma, Zoe Evans, Emma Frothingham. Lucy Keniston, <laughs> Caroline Mahoney, <laughs> Isabella O'Donovan. Haley McIntyre. Haley McIntyre twice. And Coach Ben Raymond. And you might have to squat. Yeah, yeah. You guys have strong bodies. Oh, it's okay. Good now. We'll get on to me too. we go. Yeah. Awesome. Better that way. <laughs> 
Okay, we're going to move right along. Thank you, swimmers, for coming and coaches. Um, next on the agenda, we have administrative reports beginning with principals. So let's start with Jason. Start with a little more. Principal of Pond Cove Elementary School. Testing. <laughs> Good evening. So I'll start by uh, just sharing a few exciting things that are happening at Pond Cove recently. Throughout the month of February, Pond Cove students and staff have participated in the Great Kindness Challenge. So this event empowers students to create a culture of kindness in our school. If you s search for that online, Great Kindness Challenge, you'll find information about it. So something that um, our guidance counselor, uh, Bree Gallagher, suggested, and we really ran with it. So as part of the challenge, students participated in uh, classroom-based kindness initiatives. So some examples of this, uh, Mrs. Jennings' first grade class created a kindness quilt which um, had a hundred examples of acts of kindness in the quilt. <laughs> and Mrs. Robbins' class, to get collaboratively, came up with a, a chant that the kids say every time one of their peers earns a, a peaceful Pond Cove link. So there are a lot of things that they did. And the culminating event was an assembly that we had on February 27th. And we had two assemblies, a K2 and a 3-4, because the, the, the entire school is quite large. So. Um, and at this assembly, a book was shared that every student in Pond Cove contributed to writing. And I have that in digital form, and I'll send it to all of you a little later, so you can just take a peek at it. It was great. It was a wonderful assembly. So also on the evening of February 27th, we had our second all-school um, family night. Uh, our, our tech integrator, Thomas Chaltre, he does an outstanding job with these nights. This tech night was, it was an interactive approach to teaching parents how we develop digital portfolios for students or how students develop them for themselves um, through Google products. And specifically this night, the emphasis was on Google Drive um, and shared docs. And so students had a chance to teach their parents about that and we had uh, about 200 um, folks attend that night and, um, so it was it was wonderful um, finally teachers are preparing for parent conferences and in fact many have already happened teachers are, are accommodating the best they can for parents and also providing conferences before school and after school uh, the a few weeks before conference day so that works out well for everyone and uh, just a quick update, we're currently still holding at 85 kindergarten students registered. So now we're equal to where we're at this time of year, 85. And finally, um, just a little bit on upcoming professional development. Tomorrow at our staff meeting, staff will receive training on Empower Me test administration. So Empower Me is what you might think of as the MEA. And it's, it's a test that, I mean, we don't want, we don't stress students out over it, but we take it very seriously and do everything we can to create optimal testing, a testing environment. So um, teachers are being trained in a refresher for proctoring. Students have been engaged in released item practice for the test. So we're gearing up and ready to go with that. And that's all I have for tonight. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> Principal of Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Good. So, um, a few things are happening. Kind of as Jason said, we have the MEA testing coming up. 
Uh, I'm going to be sending a, an email home to parents tomorrow, but I'm trying to include a whole bunch of things with it, so we're gathering right now. Um, but essentially, it's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, along with Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the following week. So we tried to spread it out a little bit more this year. Um, it's two hours in the morning of each of those days. Uh, we're going to start out by serving a light breakfast on the Tuesday of each week um, for all students to, to get. Um, so kind of just starting to raise the game a little bit. We had our meeting the other day um, for staff training and talked about the difference in a room with a proctor that just sits on the side as opposed to one that gets up and moves around and just kind of makes it feel a little more important and kind of monitors how kids are progressing. Are they just circling boxes or are they actually working? So um, really trying to put a little more focus on it. Parent conferences are coming up. And as Jason said, something kind of unique, I think, to CAPE is they kind of just happen. <laughs> I've come to learn. And uh, it's nice because you see parents for the last two weeks are in the building in the mornings or in the afternoon. It just kind of is more than a, a one-shot deal. Uh, and I think it's, it works out much better that way, actually. Uh, it, you know it's springtime when you start talking about Chewankee many days of the week. Um, so that's starting to become a hot issue again. Um, it's just that time of year. So we're going we're gonna to continue on with our Last year we made a few adjustments to the, the lead up to Chewankee for parents and a little more, I think, education around what to expect. Um, not really a vacation or a retreat, but really, you know, still a lot of quality learning and um, it's not all about being in a hotel room. Um, so I think that's kind of something good that we started last year um, with the support of CIF and now we're kind of taking it on. And then a couple other quick highlights. I went to my first unified basketball game last night after at the middle school. It was so much fun. It was like a relaxing atmosphere, not stressful, um, and nothing but celebrations. And very, you know, the typical sporting events are so competitive, and it just turns into this thing. And that was not the experience I had yesterday at all. It was awesome. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I think we need an indoor track facility because right now the middle school just uses the interior hallways for track practice every day after school. Um, but it seems to be a thing they do, so I just kind of <laughs> let it go. Uh, but we just, we only, ha it's pretty impressive. We have three coaches for over 100 athletes. Um, they just went to the expo, which they call the mecca of indoor track, I've come to learn. Um, and I think that they, we were very successful there, probably largely because of the numbers. But to, the coaches are like, oh my, trying to keep track of 100 kids at a track meet, especially the first timers that are not really in tune with the system and where they should be and when. So that was, that's pretty impressive, that level of commitment. And then really a chance to celebrate our staff, um, Amanda Kazakra, who's our librarian and, and technology specialist. Um, she's also the president of the Maine Association of School Libraries, um, co-authored uh, uh, the feature article um, in, in the, what is it called, the Journal of American, uh, American Association of School Libraries. So she co-authored this. It's a national magazine of Knowledge Quest, and the article was um, School Libraries Go Beyond the Four Walls. So it's pretty impressive that we're reaching um, not just in our little community, but our people are getting out there to be nationally recognized. So um, congratulations to her on that. And, and I think that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Charlie. Um, Jeff Shaw, principal of Cape Elizabeth High School. Mm -hmm. So a few things, first of all. I think this is the first public announcement of our new student body government president. Um, she happens to be sitting right there. That's Piper Strunk. So congratulations. She's accumulating titles and responsibilities and has nothing else to do, so why not do one more thing? There is a event that I wanted to mention next Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. in the auditorium. I would encourage any parent of any grade level to come. It's a college panel, so um, representatives of different colleges, different kinds of colleges are coming, and they are going to share their perspectives and their experiences for any parents who are interested, or students who are interested. It's ideal experience for both. Um, I've said a number of times that the college process has gotten incredibly chaotic and unpredictable, and the more information that parents have and students have, the better prepared they'll be. Um, so the panel has been organized by our college counselor, Elizabeth Thomas, 
and so she will be sort of the moderator of that event. But again, I would encourage as many people as possible to attend. You will definitely learn something. I've gone to about 10 of them over the years, and I've learned something different every single year. Um, the second thing I wanted to mention is that the girls' basketball team um, at the Class B championship game, or just before it, were awarded the sportsmanship uh, banner, which is a really cool and important, I think, recognition for the way they approach the competitions, the way they approach one another, they, the way they approach team, team players on other teams. So it's very cool. And last, I just wanted to mention a few people at the risk of leaving some people out. People who have been really long time advisors or coaches at the high school. Because we are really fortunate to have a lot of people in some really very demanding positions that are incredibly rewarding to kids. And I think we're um, in a better position than a lot of high schools because a lot of these positions they're hard to attract people for. One person who is absolutely unpre unprecedented, I, I wonder if in the state of Maine there's another full-time teacher who also coaches every single season, but we happen to have one person who does that, who just left here, Ben Raymond. Um, I don't know how he does it, um, but he coaches boys soccer, he coaches girls and boys swimming, and he coaches boys lacrosse. And he works during the summer coaching. Um, so it is absolutely incredible. And so another person is a very long time, this is unusual, to have a community member who has been coaching a sport for as long a time as he has, and that's Joe Hendrickson, who's been coaching softball for years and years and years and years, and doing a really nice job of that. Um, Jim Ray has been our boys basketball coach for many years um, with great results. The boys went to the state championship game this past year. Doug Worthley has been the boys and girls track coach for at least as long as I've been at the high school and longer. Um, so that's over 20 years he's been the boys and girls track coach. That's huge. Um, Mary Page for the last many years has been the mock trial coach. Um, eight of the last nine years our team has won the state championship. Um, so she's had an incredible record of success and that's a really challenging competition. Really, really challenging competition for both the coaches and the students as well. Melissa, Melissa Oliver has done a fantastic job for quite a few years at Model UN. Our kids win all kinds of awards every single year. She puts in a lot of hours, a lot of hours. She also happens to be the most organized advisor I've ever met. Her field trip forms are always impeccable. Whenever people ask me, how do you do this field trip process? I say, go talk to Melissa Oliver. She does it perfectly, um, and I'll help what, where I can. Um, Dick Mullen and Ms. Lisa Melanson for many years, highly successful speech and debate coaches, very appreciative of their efforts. Um, the best class advisor that I have ever had the privilege of working with over many years, and that is Joanne Moriarty, uh, who's one of our administrative assistants in the high school. I wasn't able to persuade her to take on another class this year, but she did agree to take on student government. So she's the, the advisor for student government and incredibly dedicated. Evan Thayer is the, um, he, he, ro the robotics program, K through 12, in the school district is his brainchild. And he puts in unbelievable hours. And one of the teams just won the state championship. So there's a huge banner when you walk into the high school. Um, it's quite incredible. Um, Aaron Filio, who, as you know, will be leaving middle school, at, leaving as football coach, um, to go to his alma mater, which we're certainly sad to lose Aaron, but understand the pull of his alma mater. So he's, he, but he's done a fantastic job. Um, and that program um, fills an incredible niche for a group of kids who otherwise would not have a, a sport that they'd particularly be attracted to play and participate in in the fall. Um, Tom Cohan, who's uh, for many years in ed tech in the high school and for many years has been the organizer of our senior to senior program, among other things. He has other roles as well, but it's the program where our high school seniors each contribute at least three hours to Cape Elizabeth senior citizens before they graduate. Um, so that's been a really wonderful program. Um, and last but certainly not least, Tom Lazat, who for many years has been um, the director of our jazz band program 
uh, in the afternoons, and they have a great record of success. And I think you already know that Tom won a national award this year, um, which is absolutely as for being the Jazz Educator of the Year, and that's across the nation. Um, that's a really, really, really prestigious award. So we're blessed to have all these people who just go way above and beyond. Um, and if you consider the number of hours, I don't want to consider the number of hours and what they get paid. They're, they're dedicated. They really do it for for the joy that they get out of it as much as anything else. So I wanted to mention them publicly. Thank you. Gal Pepe, Director of Special Services. Yes, and um, the biggest news I have is that today we had our special education review with the Maine DOE. So we had uh, two represent representatives from Maine DOE were here for most of the day. We did a couple of tours. Uh, we toured uh, Pond Cove in the middle school, and I did want to give a big thanks to both Cheryl Joyce and Jess Waco, Waco for being part uh, participating in this review or this audit that was done by the state. And it went very well. We've already got some preliminary findings, and it's a small list. And overall, they were very impressed with the processes we have in place for meeting this, the needs of our students in special education. Um, uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that two of our social workers recently attended um, the final of a three-part series on trauma sensitivity. That's working with students who have had adverse childhood experiences. Both therapists were very impressed with the presenter and felt that many of the strategies shared could be directly implemented into their practice. Um, and currently we are servicing 163 students in special education, 64 at Pond Cove, 48 at middle school, and 51 at the high school. We currently have 18 students in referral, and we have two students that have received their programming out of district. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Kathy Sankard, Director of Teaching and Learning. Hello. <coughs> Since last month, I have updates in three areas, evaluation, English language learners, and professional development. In the area of evaluation, um, the Evaluation Steering Committee has approved rubrics for the behavior specialists, the occupational therapists, the physical therapists, and the school nurses, and those have been uploaded into Teach Point. so we're excited to have an evaluation tool that's appropriate for them and not force them into the teacher rubric. Um, and then as well, the members of the evaluation committee are developing training materials for use with staff next year. In terms of English language learners, the access for ELL's testing, which is an annual state, federal and state requirement, has been completed. And so Jessica Miller, our ELL teacher, and I are going to be meeting over the next couple of weeks to review and revise the LAO plan. It's been, um, oh, I think at least five years since it's been updated. So you'll be hearing more about that once we've, once we've finished that work. And then in terms of professional development, we had a PD Wednesday on March 6th. Um, our fifth grade teachers, as well as the Pond Cove teachers, worked with a math coach whom we've had come to Cape Elizabeth a couple of times. Uh, she knows uh, all of the ins and outs of everyday math, our K-5 program, and, uh, and, and worked particularly with the Pond Cove teachers on accessing Connect Ed, which is the online platform. And um, that was all very well received, so we will in all probability be bringing her back. And. Let's see, the middle and high school math teachers <coughs> met to review the 512 math sequence, and um, it was a robust conversation, as math conversations usually are, uh, actually, as any curriculum conversation usually is, and um, we'll, we'll be getting back to you. There'll be more to come on that, um, both with the board and also with the parent community in general. Um, and then there was some cross-building collaboration. The middle and high school ELA and world languages teachers worked together. And then on March 7th and today, um, our literacy coach came and worked with, um, with teachers. She worked on March 7th with the fifth and sixth grade teachers and today with the third and fourth grade teachers. 
We have a PD Wednesday on April 3rd, and the plan is that the Pond Cove teachers will be having part two of their in-depth exploration of all of the reports available to teachers on the NWA website so they can um, improve the way they use that data to inform instruction and have more information to share uh, with parents. And we anticipate collaborative work, middle school, high school, on science and social studies on that day. And then finally, the high school is dedicating two faculty meetings this month to continue their work on the mechanism for tracking and reporting and certifying proficiency to our graduation standards. Any questions? Oh, I just, it's not a question, it's just more, God bless you. Um, if, I'm just curious about the collaboration for ELA uh, between, the, you said, 5th and fifth through 12th grade. Right. Just an example of maybe one exercise or something that you can collaborate on. Well, as it happens, the woman sitting to your right attended that meeting. Oh, yeah. So okay. I was actually with a math teacher, so I, I think I'll defer to her for okay. that example. So one of the things they talked about <clears throat> was... Um, what they felt was the most important um, standard that their grade addressed. And then moving forward, um, and, and Wynn was here as well um, at, at that meeting, uh, moving forward, um, they were looking at one of the teachers, um, Lauren, Lauren Tarantino, Tarantino um, had been to a session on looking, reading difficult reading difficult material. And that was one of the things that they felt at all grade levels that um, they might be interested in uh, seeing how that lesson worked on really looking at material um, that was difficult for students, um, challenging material. So they were interested. So I believe that in the next session, um, she will share her work with that. So things like that, um, that they can use uh, from you know, middle school through high school, uh -huh. but at their particular level. So. Yeah. No, thank you. It was I, a great it's, just, it's interesting to hear yeah, how right. you're aligning and working up and down. And at the world, That's I know great. the world languages teachers were looking particularly at the level one curriculum because that. Is, that's the level that's offered in both schools. So do they have the same learning goals, knowledge, skill, expectations for their students? How do they know that? So they put their assessments on the table. So that's another example of the kind of work that goes on. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, uh, Catherine Mesmer was out sick today, and she will be going out on medical leave um, at the end of this week. But we did, um, you have the financials um, in your packets. And we did look, uh, we're about two thirds of the way through, so um, if you look at um, the sheet that has all of the, the lines, 100 through 1100, um, it's really basically the summary. You'll see that we are at 67.07% expended, which is just where we should be. So uh, we do meet and go through these line by line. and. Um, and look to see if anything stands out um, and make corrections if need be. So we do that on a monthly basis. So we're, we're really right where we should be. So that brings us to my report. So you do have the March uh, 1st student enrollment report in your packet. Uh, total enrollment's down two students from last month and 19 students from last year. The district two-day future search event is coming. Um, it will take place on Friday, March 15th from three to eight, uh, excuse me, from, um, yes, three to eight, and on Saturday from eight to three um, in the cafeteria at the Cape Elizabeth High School. The guiding question for the event is how should education in Cape Elizabeth look in order to be responsive to the current and future needs of our students? Um, participants in the event will be sign assigned to tables, so we have been working on that, and um, they will pretty much stay at their tables and um, have a series of topics that will be discussed, uh, such as um, the past, a histo map of our schools, our current reality, the prouds and sorrows, the future, a portrait of Cape of a Cape Elizabeth graduate. So um, it's it's a very filled. Um, day and a half, um, but it's, it's very interesting. Um, and I've been uh, involved in one of, I was involved in one of these last year and, and people felt uh, 
really happy at the end of the day that they have had great, great discussion and um, that they have had a chance to really discuss with people about um, what they wanted in their schools. So over 100 people have agreed to participate in the event. And if any of our viewers out there um, in TV land are interested in attending, please call my office, 799-2217, uh, extension 270, to reserve your space at a table. And we have a lot of students coming, so that's pretty exciting too. Uh, moving forward, data from the event will be analyzed. Um, district goals will be developed, and a strategic plan will be created based on those goals. On Monday afternoon, I attended the unified basketball game at the high school, and uh, there were four teams. And the teams were made up of special education and re regular education students, and I watched the one game with York. Uh, it, was, it was so exciting. Uh, Nate Carpenter and Sarah ba Bacal, uh coached for the Capers. Did I say her name right? Yeah. Beckle. 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 And they won the game. They were very excited because apparently they hadn't won a lot of games. So winning this game was very exciting. The kids were just so excited. And Nate and Sarah were very excited too. Um, so these games combine, a, and I, um, I know that Troy talks a little bit about it, they, they combine a touch of competitiveness with a lot of kindness. And they're just, you just feel so, your, your heart is warm to watch them. They're just, the kids are so great to each other. It's really fun. So um, congratulations to all the students who participated. Um, Karen Johnson is, um, is an ed tech who also uh, worked, careful, uh, worked along with the coaches. Um, uh, Catherine Mesmer, as I mentioned, is our school finance director will be out on medical leave for several weeks. And Herb Hopkins, um, who retired as a business manager from Yarmouth Schools, will be stepping in to help with the budget development. And he did meet with us today, uh, with A team today, um, and seems to have a really good understanding of the school budget. And I felt really good that he was there. Um, we did, the administrative team did meet today to continue working to reach the goal of a reduction of the FY20 expenditure budget of $449,000 from the original request. Um, we're still waiting for the report of the percent of increase for health insurance. We should be getting the range um, this week, um, but our final percentage won't be determined until the beginning of April. So we are so close to the school board's goal of 6% um, in the expenditure budget, which would result in a 5.1 increase on taxes. So we've really had some intense uh, and analytical reviews of our expenditures, some great discussions, and we are confident that we will reach that goal. So it was, it was another great meeting, and I'm very, very proud of the administrative team for their, their work on this. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Okay. Next, under new business, may I have a motion, please? I move we approve or accept a SEAP grant of $50,000 for the Pong, Pong Cove Playground renovation. A second. Any discussion? Can we hear a little bit about this? Is there anybody that... <laughs> So happy to answer, I guess, questions. I know there was a bit of a discussion I wasn't in the last meeting, but do we just give an overview of the program? Or? So the grant is coming from CEEF to the school department. Yes. Is my so, yes. yes. So it's a $50,000 grant from CEEF um, specific to the playground, and it will go directly to the school department to fund the portion of the program to the playground, which will be specifically Natureland um, and, and that portion of our, pro our fundraising effort. That's great news. Yeah. Yes, it is great news. You guys have done a really amazing job with your fundraising Thank you. work. It's very solid and organized and Thanks. very impressive. It's Thank been you. A huge team effort. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All those in favor? And thank you, Steve. <laughs> thank right. you, Steve. All right. Uh, next item 7B. May I have a motion, please? I move we approve the following 2018-2019 administrative and athletic extracurricular
personnel nominations as nominated in our packets. We have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Thanks again to these um, people for stepping up and working hard on behalf of our students. So is Sean Green that would be in place of Aaron Filio? Yes. Good? Um, okay, great. All those in favor? Okay. Next, 7C, no vote required. Um, Hope, do you wanna? Sure, so on the, um, the first read policies that are before us tonight, um, there really aren't a lot of changes that we've uh, we talked through at the meeting. There's advertising in school, I believe we've left that. That's it's adequate in its current state. Um, and then on um, policy BEDB, which is the agenda um, for the board meeting, we've added a paragraph that's, that appears in the Maine School Management Association policy that's required. Um, and then in the uh, BEDBA agenda format, it was curiously out of order and confusing. <laughs> Um, so we simply um, uh, want to have that one kind of clean up and make it more readable to, to make sense. So those three are sort of, you know, no substantive changes effectively on those. Um, Thank you. And then, yeah. Um, oh, you want to just say in uh, BEDB what was added? By, from the MSMA, do you remember which par paragraph it was? Just for, if you, if you don't remember, it's okay. Um, I don't have it at my fingertips. Okay, all right, no worries. Thank you. Okay. Um, I can probably, well, let's just, okay. I, think well, it was, well, I think it was some language under the dissemination of supporting materials. I think there was some language under there. Yes. Sounds right. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, we can just move on and we can okay. come back to it next month. Um, item 7D, may I have a motion, please? Uh, we need a motion. I move we approve the following policies for second reading, IHBAC child find, DN school, school property disposition, GCFB recruiting and hiring of administrative staff, and JRA student education records and information. I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Hope, do you wanna fill us in? Uh, sure, so on the child find, um, this is the one, um, LPV brought it to our attention that it was out of compliance with the, the, the requirements. Um, specifically, there's a time frame under which we have to, to make the identification of, of the children that, are, that um, need the services, so we've updated that. Um, school property and uh, disposition, what we did there was there are certain dollar amounts that trigger the requirement to come to the, the school board or the superintendent, and we've adjusted those based on inflation effectively. So there were smaller dollar amounts where a lot of requests would have to go through superintendent. Um, and currently, a lot, a lot of properly disposed of in the old desks and the file cabinets and whatnot. So it's, we needed to update that to make it um, easier to take care of these issues without having to raise it. Um, and then the last two. Um, GCFB recruiting and hiring of administrative staff. That is also, um, there were updates from the Maine School Management Association based on their legal requirements and the same thing with student education records and information. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor? Thank you, Hope and Elizabeth. We're at community reports. So um, we've heard from policy, and now the tech committee. Elizabeth, do you want to report anything? Um, so the tech committee has yet to meet, although uh, based on discussions with the superintendent and board leadership, um, 
it, I hope that the tech committee will kind of take on the um, the website project as far as helping um, do some research and and do some community input and that sort of thing as far as what we want with our website. So stay tuned. The tech committee is going to ramp up soon. Any other committees that I am forgetting about? The Drapport Committee has met once, and uh, I'm personally very excited about that committee uh, because uh, we are gathering a great team uh, that will involve uh, parent association, teacher, uh, principal, vice principal, social worker, myself, and probably one of the business owner and some another member from the community. And our hope and our goal is to work on preventing, bringing people, to, preventing people so they never cross the path of drop out. Uh, so we've uh, had, we had a second uh, meeting scheduled, but uh, uh, Mr. Shad had a uh, uh, unscheduled uh, surgery, so we will be rescheduling that. And uh, we hope to meet more often. It's not going to be once a year. So we're going to be meeting most likely three times a year or more if necessary. So we will probably hopefully producing some uh, good programs out of it. Okay. Thank you, Master. This is for the high school primarily. Correct. Right? Okay. Um, I did not go to PAS. I'm not sure if it was held last month. And then it's well, there's one Thursday. tomorrow, but yeah. or Thursday, but Thursday. was there one uh, in February? I don't believe so. I don't know. So no updates there. Uh, okay. So moving on to item nine already. Are there any requests for future school board meeting items? Okay, so then coming up, uh, upcoming meetings, we have a, a school board workshop. Um, it was just rescheduled or just scheduled last week for um, Tuesday, March 19th at 6.30 p.m. at the high school library. We um, have included two meetings that the town council uh, will be holding next Wednesday and Thursday here in the um, I guess the Jordan Conference Room where they'll be presenting their budget much like we did for our first budget workshop in the end of January. Um, we're invited to attend that. And then on, um, it says Wednesday, but Tuesday, March 26th um, is our next, um, well, it will be the next budget workshop after next Tuesday. And then policy committee meets on, um, is that gonna be Wednesday or Tuesday, March 26th? I'm not sure. Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Tuesday. And then, is there something else on there that I was supposed to include? Is that uh, supposed to be, that's PM? The change from, we were meeting at 3.30? 3.30, uh, that's 3.30. Oh, okay, so it's, two, so policy committee will be meeting on Tuesday, March 26th at 3.30 PM, okay. Good catch. Uh, no, there wasn't anything else. Okay. <clears throat> we were just going to talk about the future search, which Donna mentioned, oh, and the superintendent. Right. right. Just to That's remind right. her that that was happening this right. Friday, Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday. That's right. Thank you. Um, so that at this point, um, before we make a motion, um, someone perhaps will make a motion <laughs> to go into executive session. Um, and at that point, um, the cameras were going to cease, and whoever wants to stay while we're in executive session can stay or not stay. Um, but we'll be coming back after executive session. So, may I have a motion for number 11, please? I move we enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA subsection 4056A to consider administrative evaluations. That. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor? Okay.
We don't have to vote for this. Yeah, yeah it's a little messy. So, okay, we're good. Okay, thank you. We've just ended our first executive session. Now moving on to um, next item. May I have a motion? I move <laughs> with help uh, that we approve the renew contracts for Troy Eastman. Do I name them? Yes. Troy Eastman, Jason Mandarinis, and Sarah Ferre Pett for their two year contract. And Carl. No, that's going to be separate. Oh, sorry. Because he's on a continuing. Oh. So for Troy Eastman, Jason Mangerini's, and Sarah Ferre Pett, I move we renew their contracts for two years. Any a second? Second. Any discussion? Just want to say thank you to the administrators. We're we're glad to have you stay on for two more years. Great work. Yep. All those in favor? And then we need another uh, motion for uh, Kyle Mori because he is completing his first year of probation and one more probationary year. All right, so I move we renew the contract for Kyle Murray for a continuing contract. No. no. Probationary. 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 Yeah. Second year probationary. Thank you. For a second year probationary. May I have a second? Yeah. Any discussion? No. Okay. Thank you to Kyle. Thank you to Kyle. All those in favor? Okay. Okay. Next item. Um, may I have a motion? Executive session. I move. We enter into executive session pursuant of one MRSA subsection. 4056A to consider administrative evaluation of the superintendent of schools. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right.
right. Thank you everybody for that really great executive session. <laughs> so now may I have a motion? I move we adjourn. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you, everybody. <laughs>